Blooded and sad, a severed head sits on its stick. Its eyes snap open and dart from you to the nearest noxious bulb and... Open the chest there! Go on! You know you want to! Open the chest! There's loot in it! Open the chest! Don't mind that idiot! Open the chest! He looks to the suspicious bulb surrounding the chest, then back to you. He knows he's caught out. His lip quivers, wobbles, then he starts crying. The crying goes on for an uncomfortably long time. He recovers his composure, looks down at the earth before him, speaks quietly. It, it's just... it's just... I want to die! Can't die! Can't kill myself, neither! If my mother could see me now, she'd be mortified! Hope glints in his eye. Just... just... open the chest! That's all! Open the chest! Boy's oh, dragging you! Good things occur! Very good things! Just open the chest! A sly look passes across his face. You won't regret it! Oh, to put it another way, you won't live to regret it!
vermin, thieves, pests. Leeches. Void woken. We meet again. away your essence you will not be spared your time is up squash the vermin hang the thieves calling us vermin, but we'll just keep putting them down.
ours. Ours. You are ours. We are the many and the old. We were first. We are the beginning and the end. We will return. The corpses of voidlings lie in heaps around you, a miasma of cursed fluid pooling at your feet. They came wave after wave after wave. Relentless. Jolly good fun, actually. Those filthy beasts were like rats. A swarm most vile, but vanquished as a matter of course. There were many of the critters, but I didn't even break a sweat. Big fire boom, lightning crash. One moment, sun. The next, I feel darkness inside me. Then, noise. So much noise. Clank, moan, clink, groan. I hid in a stump. I'm not a stupid squirrel. I have much stowed away for hard times. But I saw them! I saw the shinies! Shinies! Darkness left, the night again! Warm! I saw glints in sand and dirt. Can't go there now! Salamanders! They like the meat. I don't want to be meat! Okay, I hope you find shinies. They make happy.
I am your love of death. Come embrace your cousin. Come repay your debts. Come and face the end.
Same one from before. Thank you. 
stand back and keep your hands off your weapons. Convince me you're no Magister, or draw one last deep breath. I will not. You do not wear the collar of oppression. Explain. I have heard of this woman. No Magister would know. She can deceive our enemies, but sadly she cannot escape them. You do not share this weakness, as your presence here attests. I apologize for the steel-tipped welcome, but lives are at stake. Hold on, I'll let you up. You are fortunate to have found this place. The hollow marshes swallow life and regurgitate only the dead. The guests, they call themselves Seekers. They're brave people, and friends to sorcerers. But you'll find them a battered band here today, brought low by bloody battle. Magisters, of course. Who else? The Seekers came here to rescue a sorcerer from the fort. They failed. Many fell. They've heard the shriek a shriek. I thank the goddess I'm not haunted by their sound. To know one's fate is to be fearless. I reside in Amadia's palm. I am hers to shield or hers to crush, and in that knowledge, I am content. They knew him to be Godwoken. They sought to kindle the divinity slumbering deep within his soul. But Alexander bears no rivals. Only the son can follow the father, or so he is convinced. For him, divinity. For the others, the dungeons. It is truly harrowing to know this man seeks to be the Seven's chosen. Have you never heard of them? From the tales they tell of Bracchus Rex? They were living weapons, made of flesh and reared in torture. The pain they endured was so terrible, their screams turned to solid lightning. Turns out the tales are true. The Magisters dug deep and returned these horrors to the surface. As you wish. She is a goddess, and I am her servant. A hand and shield maiden of Amadia. Praise be her name, and praise be her starlit eyes. Amadia is the Great Mother. She is the goddess in whose womb magic was conceived. From whose sacred body immortal was Gratiana, her priestess in this sanctuary, is teaching me her ways. For several years now, I've been her disciple. But she has resided here for centuries, sustained by Amadia's love. I was like you once. A lost soul driven by instinct from the bowels of Fort Joy. There have been others. They tried to make it back to the mainland, but were never heard of again. I chose to stay. My home is here now. This is where I found solace, found sanctuary. I found the Great Mother and have been nurtured by her magic ever since. It is the laboratory of a lunatic. A place removed from mercy and sanity where mad Bracchus Rex would experiment to his dark heart's content. There are ruins in the marshes. Stonework vultures that perch above the king's long-buried treasure. But his is not a treasure of gold, ruby, and sapphire. 
It is a treasure of death. Weapons and vile magic. The nights here are long and lonely, but I often listen to my mistress Gratiana speak of days long gone. The heydays of Bracchus Rex. Perhaps she will tell you her tales as well. Haunted quagmires is what they are, and what is mired in them is madness. Bracchus Rex. He went too far. Source was never meant to be harnessed in weaponry. May Amadia curse his soul for turning creation into destruction. Be welcome to this sanctuary. Amadia's eye in the sky. A young man in oversized armor paces around a table covered with a spread of maps, his face a tight scowl of frustration. Every approach blocked. Oh, damn it. What good are battle tactics against those things anyway? He glances up. In quick succession, he becomes aware of both your presence and the fact that you're not a familiar face. Who the blazes are you? A sorcerer, indeed. I should have realized. A seeker can always recognize a sorcerer when they see one. The young man anxiously fidgets with his curved bow. You found a matter close to his heart, evidently. That's... that's easier said than done, I'm afraid. Much easier said. Yet the Magisters have us cornered. They have these... weapons called Shriekers. If we try to go against them unprepared, we're dead. We've lost many already. There's weapons. Ancient devices that can counter those things. Our leader, Sir Gareth, set out to find them so we could break the Magister blockade and escape this island. But he hasn't returned. If Sir Gareth doesn't come back with those weapons in tow, well, this island will be our grave. You'll... you'll help us. His shoulders visibly relax, the weighty armor upon them settling with a clink. Thank you. Allies are in short supply in this place. If you help us, I promise, we'll get you as far away from... Please, ask. Whatever helps. None. He set out to find those source weapons, and that's the last we saw of him. The masked priestess, Gratiana, told Sir Gareth of them after she granted us shelter here. She was reluctant at first, but... Well, Sir Gareth can be very insistent. Speak to her if you wish. She may know more.
The Magister flagship, the Lady Vengeance, she's anchored at the old harbor. Once the way is clear, we're to take her and get the hell out of here. The birds are asleep in the sky. We came to free an elf called Verdus from Fort Joy. He was a godwoken. He could have been the next divine, but we failed him. Well, before there's a divine, there must be a godwoken. Only a special few among sorcerers have this potential. Without them, a true successor to Lucian will never rise. And on top of everything, someone seems to be killing what few Godwoken there are. It must be Alexander. A failed Godwoken like him wouldn't want to see any other become the next divine. Wish money barn, now don't you cry. A dwarf stands by a young woman. He seems intensely focused on her, whispering and singing softly in her ear. She's staring blankly into space. Blood and bone, fire and smoke, death and... and worse. Hush now, Leia. They'll not hurt you again. You're safe now. Once Garry gets back, we're going home. You'll see. You'll be fine. The woman rubs her neck, raking her nails across her skin as she whimpers. The dwarf starts at the sound of your voice, gripping the woman's arm for a moment before he relaxes. New faces. Hope you aren't bushwhacked by the Magisters too. As for her neck, she's remembering the damnable source collar she once wore. Lucky for us, she had the skills to remove them. There's many a sorcerer that's been free thanks to her. The dwarf smiles, his eyes filling with warmth as he looks at Leia. Aye, we are at that. He strokes her hair as Leia leans her forehead against his shoulder, muttering quietly about Gareth. We were part of the caravan headed to Fort Joy. Shiny collars and all. Gareth and the Seekers ambushed the caravan and freed us. Saved every one of us from that hell. But now he's off searching for weapons to take down them shriekers. And all we can do is sit here, thinking about the god woken we didn't save. From fragments to whole. From their past to our future. From their hope to ours. She ain't detailed. But she ain't wrong. The Godwoken are our hope that a new divine can be born. Someone to replace Lucian and push back the Voidwoken. Someone to restore order and protect the source. I'd speak to Exter if you want to know more. There's ways, but I ain't privy to them. One thing I do know, mind. The Voidwoken have their number. They react to Godwoken like no one else. Barking dogs and wolves clothing. Teeth in the sea. Teeth in the swamp. Teeth Aye, there's enough of them about. But don't you worry none. Gareth will be back soon. Then we'll be home in two shakes of a lamb's tail. We were part of the caravan headed, but now he the dwarf starts to sing softly as the Please, Armadi, bless Smoke and, and protect your humble servant. Coats of death. Gareth. Before you stands a figure, her body wreathed in cloth. All you can see of her eyes are two dark holes in an ornate mask. Armadia's blessings, child. I have not seen this face in our sanctuary before. 
Pray, who are you? The birds are asleep. The moon's in the sky. The seven will show us you're safe in bed. So close your sweet eyes and rest your wee head. There are not many places to lay down a weary head, but rest here a while. You are welcome. I am Gratiana, priestess of Armadia. It is a privilege to welcome you to her sanctuary from Bracchus's vile swamps. It was not always thus. This swamp was once a rich, lush land before he came, before Bracchus. I have been here for many years. It has given me a lot of time to reflect on the past and learn from it. In truth, the torments of Bracchus and of these magisters were not so different. Both purged source from this land. Indeed, the Magisters have even taken Bracchus's worst tools. First, the purging ones, and now those shriekers. Without something more powerful than these sticks the Seekers are armed with, those crucified monstrosities will kill them to a man. ran into the swamps. He pestered me for aid against the Shriekers, and when I finally told him of a cache of Bracchus's soul-forged weapons, he rushed away to find it. A bold move, but ill-advised. Unless he returns with weapons enough, I fear none of these Seekers will leave this island with air in their lungs. He set off north, to the ruins of Bracchus's source armory, but there is no way to know what he found there, even if he survived the swamps. Walk ever in Armadia's grace, child. A grim-faced man sifts through a pile of badly damaged weapons, salvaging the repairable, ditching the broken. He picks up a rapier, the blade nicked and splintered, the hilt twisted. He holds the damaged blade up to the light. This was Halon's blade. It was his first, it was also his last. He didn't intend to die here, but die here he did. He was an ordinary soul with an extraordinary heart, Halon, and he died for what he believed. What did Halon believe in? He believed in truth. He believed in hope. He believed that Alexander is a killer of God Woken. I believe that on one point at least, he was right. The point breaks away, leaving a jagged edge. The sword is shorter now, but it'll do more damage. Who are you? He realizes, to his surprise, that he holds the weapon in his hand, ready for battle. He smiles to himself, tucks the weapon away, and gets back to work. So long as Gareth returns, we will be. Don't move, Jules. Save your strength. You certain it was Verdas? He said his name. Barely even knew that much. But still... 
You tried your best. Hello, stranger. The disheveled pair eye you with hope, though their hope is tinged with mistrust. The lizard gasps as she notices the marks left on your neck by the source collar. She steps towards you. You've come from Fort Joy? Can I ask if... Did you happen to meet a man named Gareth on your way here through the swamp? He... he'll be back, Sam Adele. I know he will. He has to. He has to, indeed. We need our leader. And if he doesn't return with help soon, we haven't a hope. You're kind to offer, but you'd best talk to Gareth's squire, Exeter. He'll know where your talents can be most used. Now, Han, let's take a look at your nasty leg injury. Catch you later, stranger. It, it's good you're here. The wound is festering. It needs to be changed. The lizard holds a crimson-soaked rag against his side. He looks up as you approach, his expression oddly serene. <sighs> Magisters, they found our camp near the old harbour and unleashed hell upon us. I, I'm lucky in a way. I was wounded by an arrow. The Magisters have these other weapons, living, tortured weapons. I'd rather have five arrows and a spear stuck in me than get hit by one of those things. <sighs> the power that they unleashed. There was nothing we could do. Only run. Shriekers, they're called. I can still hear that sound they uttered. Makes my scales crawl. Sir Gareth is looking for a way to defeat them now. Let us hope he finds it. Stop fidgeting, lad. Speak if you wish to. Claude, are you still with us? The young woman chews her lower lip as she observes the injured before her. She bends to grab a rag, wiping her blood-smeared hands. She looks up and sees you. If you're looking for healing, sorcerer, well, there's not much I can do. The woman wrings the blood-stained rag in her hands anxiously. Magisters aren't known for their mercy. Many of us died. And the ones here will likely follow the same fate by a slower road. I've done all I can. Their wounds are too great. All I can offer them now is prayer and a cup of water. If you know a way, I'd be beyond grateful. Magic? All I've got is my own two hands, and... and... She trails off and limply gestures to her paltry makeshift infirmary. I'm not even a healer. Ours was killed in the attack. I'm just a cook. Do what you will. Just don't cause them any more suffering.
Amidst the rivulet street, you feel peaceful in her presence, soothed somehow by an intangible comfort. As you gaze upon her, a voice seems to reach you from within your mind and from the furthest reaches of the stars. Its whispers caress you like a breeze. The voice grows stronger, like a breeze picking up. What were whispers become words. My children, my children, gone are my children. Dead are they in the cradle I have ruled. A feeling of indescribable sadness assails you. It feels like your heart merges with the spirits, torn together by a coil of thought. My child, my child, weep with me for the mother who has lost. Weep with me and bathe in the tears of Amadia. If you had tears, they'd mingle with those of the goddess down in the tranquil crystalline pond. You, my child, I bless you. You feel yourself shine with an inner light, rejuvenated and pure, as if born anew. The goddess's tears still stream freely, and all is quiet. Some more rations, these. Perhaps if those bleeding dwarves didn't mean so much. you wish to. Are you certain you want to dismiss your companion? If we have different paths to take, you and I, so be it. An odd-looking young woman is staring intently at the statue to the divine, fingers curled rigidly at her sides. Her head snaps to you mechanically and a light suddenly flashes back into her face. The grave then... Hi, who are you, some guy? 
Ah, uh, wait, huh? well, but I, I snapped out of it before anyone got... Ah, uh, it's put it like this. But I'm a, like a god's damn gold star in. She gives you a... Hmm, you seem pretty well... Ain't that just the... So, how are you enjoying the joy? Yeah, so, you want to check this place out together? It does, right? Before we head out, lately I've been into the enchanting arts, but I can shoot, slash, summon, steal, whatever your little black heart desires. So, what'll it be? Don't know if you could tell, but mysticism's kind of my speciality. Let's get into the nitty gritty while we're at it. What sort of magic are you interested in? Sounds fine. Yeah? Well, that was easier than I thought. And I'll do my best to stay... myself. Lead the way. Well, most... Now, let's go.
amidst a crowd of and what you after a grin sure thing The shrine depicts Lucy. You hear a shrine words of it. He has spoken. Lucian has spoken. The eternal. The shrine depicts Lucy and the Divine. Avatar of a low, resonant vibration hums somewhere deep within your knees buckle. The hum grows louder. The world tilts and fades. Have all but vanished. I, I didn't think. I, I was certain I wouldn't. Thank you. The Magister flagship. It has Ballastay that tore our ship into kindling. The shout from our own mast pierced my side. I'm lucky the others managed to haul me all the way here. Especially after I saw what the Magisters did to those of us they captured. He shudders at the memory. They... They turned the living into shriekers. I wish I had a fitting way to thank the person who saved my life. As it is, all I can offer is, well... It's not much, but maybe you'll find some use for it. Leave me be. You, you healed me. How did you... Oh, never mind. I don't care how. I only care that today won't be my last. <laughs> I don't remember much. I barely had time to realize the Magisters were attacking before I was injured. The last thing I saw were these things, these shriekers. Those Magisters are gonna what they did to us. If my mother were here, she'd box my ears for not being able to thank you properly. Though I reckon that wallopin' from the Reds was punishment enough. Take this, at least. It'll have to do. <clears throat> thank you. Make sure all of them cheat death today. <laughs> How do you have so much I'm power? Healed. What? Please. What? You've healed us. All of us. I owe you a debt. We all do. The Magisters attacked our camp back at the harbour. I caught one of their arrows right in my side. That would have been a slow death. I've seen it before. He lands a comradely slap on your back. 
His strength has definitely returned. Don't you doubt it. This old war serpent's still got some fight left in him. Especially... What? Please. What? Every joint snaps rigidly into place. Chinese! 